you can speak the invincible, God can do the impossible. There is tremendous power in the tongue and as parents we have tremendous power over our lives of our children because words are containers of power. I begin by saying have a vision for you and your family. St. Paul in his letter says, he that began the good work in you will let it come to pass. There is power in words, creative power to bring life to a situation or bring death to a situation. Proverbs 18.21 tells us, death and life are in the power of the tongue, but those who indulge in it will eat its fruit. James chapter 3 verses 9 and 10 tells us, we use it to give thanks to our father and so curse our fellow men. We all have problems, so you know, whenever we say, we say all kind of things, you know. But you know, once, many years ago, I was visiting a doctor's clinic and as I was sitting out of that clinic, I seen the word problem and the problem had every uh, letter had an abbreviation towards it. And I remember that distinctly because for P it said it's a prediction. Every problem is a prediction which helps us mold our future. R, they are reminders. We are not self-sufficient. O, they are opportunities because they pull us out of the rut and cause us to think. Right now, in fact, when our city went through this pandemic, we are still going through it. You see in a lot of empathy from people. You would see people going out of their way to give oxygen cylinders, so many things, food, many things that were taken care of. Because many times in our society, we had become complacent. B, they are blessings because they opened closed doors. L, they are lessons. Every problem is a lesson because it brings in a new challenge, which is a new teacher. I remember while studying maths uh, during our degree days, and you know, every time you solved a problem, you felt so good. But it was a new teacher, it learned to see something beyond. And where are they? Sometimes you say, oh, if I go to a mountain top, I'm away from this family, away from everyone, I'll be free. No, no, no place is without problems. M, they stand for messages, they warn us about potential disaster. And finally, that S, which brings us hope. And as parents, we should always remember, they are solvable in Jesus. But there are few type of tongues that we can avoid in our home. And that I'd like to begin with the biblical description of tongues. Psalms 5 verse 9 says, or talks of a flattering tongue. Flattering tongue dictionary defines as false praise. But you know, we keep saying that we need to flatter. Without flatter, we'll never get our work done. But the word of God tells there's no truth in their mouth. Their throats are open graves. They flatter with their tongues. Many times I think, you know, it's like digging a pit for someone. Like many of us in our homes, when we want something done from somebody, we will flatter. And once the job is done, it's perfectly okay. But we have given a wrong message. A proud tongue, in the book of Psalms 12 verse 3, it tells you, a proud tongue is a tongue that only talks of myself, I, I, I. And the person who is proud, all by nature are proud, but the person's really proud. I is in the center, but whenever I say I, I, always say when you take out the S, you take out the N, the I is in the center. A lying tongue, Psalm 109 verse 2 will give you about a lying tongue. But a lying tongue is something that we face on an everyday basis. And sometimes you say it's okay, big lie, small lie, white lie, but a lie is a lie. But lying is an habit, but branding a person a liar is not good. You know, sometimes we, some of us are bold and we are able to take the consequences of the mistakes we make. So we don't lie. But when we cannot take the responsibility of whatever action has done, like for example, if a child breaks a glass and if the mother walks in, the first thing the child will say, I didn't do it. The child doesn't say yes because the child is scared of punishment. We go through life and we go through the same thing and our children at some stage start lying. 
But you know, when I joined ministry, I was asked this question. How do you like people who lie? And I said, I can't stand people who lie. By nature, I was strong. And says, then you're in the wrong place. And I couldn't understand. Says, how will you treat a person who's terminally ill or sick? And I said, with love and compassion. And I was told you will treat a person who lies with the same com love and compassion that you treat a person who's sick. And then I was explained that a person who lies is weak, but when we brand those people as liars, we are, we are making, we are putting a nameplate which is sometimes is permanent and damaged. A perverted tongue is another tongue that you need to keep out. It's because it says, a perverse tongue in the book of Proverbs 10 verse 31 will be cut off. Sometimes we are so happy making jokes that are not good, maybe about the statistics of somebody's body or something like that. And we encourage our children also to do the same. We need to ask ourselves, what does the word of God tell me? And the last tongue that I talk, which is not so good, is a backbiting tongue. It says, the north wind produces rain, but a backbiting tongue produces angry looks. You know, sometimes it takes courage to tell your children that I don't appreciate this of you. And I rather than go and tell a neighbor, and the neighbor goes and tells another neighbor, and by the time it reaches your child, he's hurt. It's the same in, retro, in reciprocal, when children speak ill, when it comes to us, it hurts us. So backbiting tongue will produce angry looks. The tongue that we look for is in Proverbs 12, 18, where it talks of a healing tongue, which is really good, because these are the tongues that are required in our homes. Because when we use those tongues in our home, we bring in healing. I remember some years ago, we celebrated at 25 years of marriage. And at the, at the mass, the priest didn't have a homely, so called up the four children and they shared what they liked about us and what they liked uh, being a part of the family. And one of them said, the best thing that I like is my mom and dad has told me that even if I make a mistake, they will stand by me. It was very nice to hear because I felt that is one thing that can bring healing in your home. So parents have tremendous power over their family with their tongues. If you tell your child who's not doing well in studies, you're good for nothing, you're good for nothing, you won't expect any better results than good for nothing. If you hear the teacher saying that, you can stand by your child and say, don't worry, one day you will do well. I did have a child who struggled with studies. One of my kids did struggle. But I constantly kept telling this child, you will do well in life. Of course, one day I was told, you're the only one who says it. But years later, after the 10th, this child did well. Later, 12th was still better. And later, when finished, the studies excelled so well that today is handling so many stores as a visual merchandiser. So, we as parents have the power to bless or to curse. Bless is to pronounce divine favor. Curse is to speak negatively. We need to ask ourselves today, what am I speaking over the lives of my children? What am I pronouncing or what am I declaring over the lives of my children? What am I declaring over the life of my spouse? What am I declaring over my finances, over my family? Because in doing so, we will be doing what God wants us to do. In the very first book of Genesis, you will see in chapter 27, Two brothers fighting, not fighting, rather one, the younger brother takes the birthright of the older brother Esau. And the father has something which teaches all parents. He says, once the words have gone out of my mouth, I cannot take them back. So instead of us saying nothing good is happening, today everything is a mess, I don't really know. Some of our children are addicted to their phones. And constantly, parents, I get these calls. I have also a teenager growing up. You are constantly saying things that I don't really know. Where are they going to head? What are they going to do? You need to rephrase your statements and say, God is going to do great things. Supernatural things will happen because I believe in Jesus. A blessing is not a blessing until it is spoken. James chapter 3 verse 4 says, it compares 
the tongue to the rudder of a ship. As parents, we can control the lives of our children and the direction of their lives. God has made us responsible to influence their lives. Approval and acceptance you need to have. These are the two A's that are required. You have got what it takes. Each one of us have got. Just like we want approval, like I, this is a joke, but uh, it's a reality. One of my kids will always ask me whether, after dressing up, will wear a couple of shoes and say, Mom, should I wear this right or should I wear this left? Which matches? And sometimes I get so irritated, I say, wear what you want. But sometimes, okay, I will tell. But one day, she landed in college with two different pair of shoes. She travelled all this way. It was early as the morning because the college began at 9 and her college was in the city. So she had to leave. And of course, when she went there, the girls asked her, how did you come with two pairs of shoes? Of course, the hostelites were kind enough to give her a, a pair of shoes. And then she called me, Mom, you never showed me. I wore two pairs of shoes. And I said, I laughed. I said, I approved. I didn't tell you. She said, I was in a hurry and I ran with two pairs of shoes. But sometimes, you know, these are very trivial things. But parents, they look to us for approval. You know, just like sometimes when we dress up as ladies, we dress up and we go and stand in front of our husbands. This is okay. We don't like it. We want their approval. We want their acceptance. Even fathers that are listening to me, when you criticize and condemn your children, you give a distorted image of the Christ or the father whom we know, who is loving, kind and affectionate. Every family will have this word, how much is too much? But understanding our roles in families will help us build our families. Our objective, the only objective that we have as parents is to build strong families so that we will build a strong domestic church. As the family goes, the society goes. If you look at many of the people who have excelled in life, their families played a very significant role in what they were doing. So, there are certain uh, alphabets, I use alphabets to avoid in our homes. First thing is the three C's that we avoid, criticism, condemnation and complaining. Criticism is rarely brings in a fruit that is good. It always brings in negativity. I know sometimes they say healthy criticism is good. But criticism need not be correction because correction brings in hope. Condemnation, Romans 8 1 tells us, there is no condemnation in Christ. When our children make mistakes and generally repent, we don't need to condemn them, we need to give them hope. Because all of us have made mistakes. There is not a single person that can say, I haven't made a mistake. My life is impeccable, not possible. Complaining is another tendency we need to stop. Because all the time if you are complaining, grumbling, your children find it very difficult. You know, and you will go around that same mountain, daily and day in and day out. Like, you know, I always ask people this. How many days was the journey to promised land? And most of them say, what? Days? It's not days, it's years. Yes, it took them 40 years. But it was a 11 day journey which took them 40 years. And the only reason was because of grumbling and complaining. Another two days that you need to really eliminate, which create inferiority in our homes is words of discouragement and destructive words. You, both you don't use. Because Abusers never create any family uh, peace, it creates family tensions. Discouragement, when your child fails, you need to tell your child, there is hope, you can do better next time. If your child doesn't get, like I remember once a girl sharing with me, she said, my mum was very disappointed. I said, why? She says, I didn't do that well in 12th. I said, how much did you get? And she said, I got 89.6. She missed a 90. And she was so discouraged. And I said, but 89.6 is an excellent percentage. But she was waiting for the approval of her parents. So parents, we have great responsibility towards our children. We don't live our dreams through them. Whatever they live and whatever they do, if we appreciate them, they will move a step higher. Because children are a gift from God. 
Psalm 127 verses 3 and 5 said, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are children of one's youth. There are a lot of sufferings caused by negative words. Many will tell you them, they are not good enough, you are not so good. Today everybody talks of 90, 95, in fact it is almost 99 percent sometimes. And if your child is not among those 90, 95, you might constantly tell them and use negative words. I have learned something, beat life into your children, love them. Nobody died out of too much love. And when you love them and you correct them, it is accepted. Encourage them when they make a mistake, encourage them when they fail. It is like similar to running a race, you can't win every race, you can't come first every time, you can't take a championship every time, but you can definitely run. So encouragement comes from parents, encouragement comes from people around you, but encouragement given by parents bring in great hope to their children. I was always allowed to follow my dreams. My dad encouraged me, in fact, after I finished uh, I wanted to move from, um, from BSc into designing. After I got a seat, I was encouraged. I was encouraged when I bought my office. I was encouraged to do many things. But later years, my life changed and I was called to serve the Lord. Like today I say I don't fashion clothes but souls. By profession, I was a fashion designer. But many things happened in my life because my parents believed in me. Like I'll share with you a very simple thing. Uh, I was very young when I started driving. And my dad used to take very good care of his car. In fact, people would say he treats his car like his wife. And many said I would never learn because my dad would never allow me to touch it. And honestly speaking, it was my dad who taught me driving. It's when my dad who took me to college, I would drive and he would sit with me. And Somewhere, because I believe in my heart that he believed in me. It's not a great feat, but I can tell you today I hardly drive. But if I have to drive at any emergency, I can still take the car and move out. So, because my father believed in me. And there were words of encouragement. So, honor your word is the next thing. When you tell your children something, you honor the word. They learn to honor their word. If you have given them a commitment, especially a commitment to meet them, to do something for them, honor that word. Because sometimes we honor people outside when we give our word. But when we give people in the homes, we take it for granted. And when you don't honor your word towards your children, they learn not to honor your word. Respect is something we all demand or say, uh, I command, I demand, whatever. But respect is something earned when we appreciate. And when we appreciate them for small things, I assure you, greater things follow. Like earlier when I used to keep a day of silence, I would always get a note or a letter under my door. And my older son who is logical would say, Mom, they even send a letter without a stamp. And I said, it's okay. But today two of my kids aren't in the city. And Sometimes I read those words of appreciation and they touch me. But I know those words of appreciation is like things that have come out of their heart. Sometimes they couldn't speak, so they have written. When you start appreciating your children, you can expect the same thing. You get what you sow. Another thing that is, you start asking and offering forgiveness at home. It's very essential because words of forgiveness, sometimes we find it difficult, but forgiveness doesn't make us smaller. Encouragement and forgiveness doesn't make us smaller. It makes us great in the eyes of God. So it takes a little humility and God expects us because that is what we pray daily. Father, forgive us as we have forgiven. And three areas which we need to keep out of our homes or rather the speech that I need to keep out of my homes is gossip, slander and the desire to give back. Gossip is telling the truth about others. Sometimes we make our homes like a page three, you know Times of India is a page three where maximum gossip is written. Gossip I need to keep out. 
slander is negative information and the desire to give back is revenge. It all has to be replaced with the word A, appreciation. Because words have power to teach, inspire, forgive, bless and encourage. I'll repeat again, because words have power to teach, inspire, forgive, bless and encourage. Words will either devalue or value your children. Your words have great power in their life. So how do I overcome my tongue? You know, many years ago, I knew a doctor who used to sing with us in the music ministry. And I asked him whether there was a tongue transplant ever done. And he said, no, Anastasia, it's a piece of muscle and it takes about 72 muscles to control this tiny organ. And he says, it wouldn't be successful. But I know one thing over the years I've learned, that the tongue can control our lives. So how do I overcome the tongue? Speak God's language, praise and be raised, or complain and remain. Fast from food, everyone will tell you fast from food. I will tell you fast from words. You know, how do I do this? I learned to pray in Sirach 22, 27. It said, I wish that a guard could be placed on my mouth and my lips would be wisely sealed. It stopped me from making mistakes and prevent me from destroying myself and others with my own tongue. To overcome the tongue, there is one thing. We claim God's promises. When your children are searching, teach them few scriptures that will help them a lifetime. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For mothers that are listening, and when we are in family, sometimes we are so tired, or sometimes today offices don't work anymore, 9 to 5, and with the stay at home, they are working almost 18 hours a day, sometimes more. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, My grace is all you need, for my power is made greatest when you are weak. When we are weak and we are finding it difficult because we become irritable, we need to claim God's word. Then, when sudden fears beset you, Proverbs 3.25 says, you will not have to worry about sudden disasters. Today, everyone is scared. I'm not saying that we can't get COVID, but we, fear of the Lord is the only fear we need to have. We don't need to fear any disaster. If any disaster comes, he will give us the strength to go through it. And finally, Many of us have had a setback for the last two years and also our children, their studies or their careers or their jobs, many are struggling. But the word of God in Jeremiah 29 says, 11 says that, I know the plans I have for you, plans to bring you hope, prosperity and not disaster, plans to bring about a future you hope for. May your words be blessed. And may you be a blessing to others. Amen.